Franz started playing some German rap music for him, because that's how <laughs> Mo, Mo got me listening to German rap music. And uh, that's what Fra Franz probably did. That's all he needs to do and everything will change. Those guys will all fall in together. First of all, congratulations on an amazing start here, 10 and 0, uh, with a pretty demanding schedule and uh, no crowds and COVID and dodging a lot of things. Uh, congratulations, just a tremendous start. Well, I appreciate that coach. And uh, you know, I, I say that, you know, obviously coming from a man like yourself, who done a phenomenal job in coaching, uh, you you know it best more than anyone that, you know, it's not easy, but you touched on it earlier. Something that we're not making an excuse about is that with COVID, you know, we have to, of course, pivot with the, the new, new. And what is the new, new? Uh, no fans. Uh, so we got to, you know, muster up our own energy from start to finish uh, because having fans in the building, it helps. And you know it better than anyone. Um, and then, you know, no family members. Now we're just allowing to have family members you know, come out and uh, support their kids, compete out there on the floor. Yeah. So. You know, in the beginning, that was a very, you know, challenging uh, moment. But uh, I commend our players, man, for how they've been so locked in and, and embracing, uh, you know, this new way of uh, college basketball until we get back to some normalcy. No, it, it's, it's, it's so hard. And I, I, I was on with Tom Izzo and with Brad Underwood. And it's the same thing. I like watching the benches right now because the refs are letting them stand up and do some more things because they're spread out. And the energy... That's what I miss the most, Juwan, is that part right now. You, you look at Franz make a play or a hunter or Eli, somebody makes a play and the bench is exploding in the background. And that's sort of where the, where the whole arena used to do it. So that's been fun for me to watch that part and your staff and everything, the engagement, because you're, you're all in it together. You're all in it together. You're deep, everybody is starting to realize and, and I saw a long time ago when I saw a couple of games, I said, these guys have a chance here to be good. And you know there's a lot there. But I think nobody's talking about your defense right now. People are shooting 37% uh, from, from anywhere on the floor, right? Uh, people are only getting, nine, I think, nine assists a game against your guys. And, I mean, this is, this is without all summer of shell drills and interrupted stuff. Talk to me about what your defense has done right now because it's absolutely terrific. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, if you go back and ask um, our players and staff, uh, our first staff meeting, the first conversation I had with the group when we were in person and we had the social distance and all, first thing I said, we got to be a better defensive team. Uh, when you ask the players, what was the first thing that we did when we returned we had pretty much the majority of our players allowed to be inside the gym because of social distancing. The first drill we started working on and the first conversation was about was about defense and how we must improve in that area in order to be, you know, give ourselves a best chance to compete against some of these top level teams. And yeah. so now our culture, our culture is driven on, you know, everyone uh, embracing each other's success. Our culture is driven on, we want to be the most toughest, nastiest team defensively. And I do it, do it with it in a way of where it doesn't result to fouling uh, and putting yep. teams in the bonus. Do it in a way of you limit your opponents to one shot opportunities. Uh, do it in a way of it makes your opponent not feel like they can just run their offense without either feeling you and without you know, a hand in their face. Um, and, and that's where, you know, guys have bought into it. And yeah, every coach has all the cute little drills, you know, to, to, to buy into the, uh, how those habits are gonna be and how it's gonna look like on the floor when you, you start competing in the games. But if the players don't buy in it and allow it to be a part of who they are and their DNA, then it, you're gonna have a challenge. And, and your, your biggest challenge is gonna be your opponent. And so, um, it's got to start within the locker room and our guys have bought in. I just really appreciate the fact that they've trust. And then knowing that coach, this is another thing too, like they have a voice. If there's something they don't agree with or they, they see that maybe as a staff, uh, we may have missed. Uh, yeah. Yep. Speak up, you ownership. know, active participant. Yeah. When they have ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, 
and, and you go from that and you go now into your offense right now. This is the first thing. I'm watching like the first games and all of a sudden I'm seeing the ball's not sticking anywhere. The ball's moving. You know, I've had really good teams where it took us a long time to stop the ball from sticking. And if it didn't ever stop sticking, we didn't win at the level <laughs> we wanted to live at. Your guys, the ball hasn't been sticking since day one. And 18 assists. I have never, in all the years, coach, never seen a team with 18 assists a game and the other opponent only get nine a game. I mean, it's extraordinary. Well, I just hope that, you know, each day we get better and better. Uh, we're working towards that. Uh, we have great film sessions where we can, uh, you talk about ownership, we can see it and how we can grow uh, as a team and also individually. Uh, the trust part of it has to be, you know, real where, uh, you know, like we have a talented team where a lot of guys feel that they can, you know, create their own shot or they feel like they, they can mm -hmm. put up 20 a night. Yeah, each and every guy can, uh, but in order for it to work, you know, some guys have to sacrifice and, um, yeah. and making the next play, making one more, making one more, it has always been enforced with the team. It, it, well, I, I take that word enforced back. It's been encouraged. It's been encouraged with the group. Yeah. If you see open man, you may have a good shot, but you know you have, your teammate is open, and he may have a better shot. You know, if you make it, uh, great. If you miss it, uh, if you have that open shot again, take it again. You know, and it's it's not like where uh, you know next you have to think about that last play. I have a next shot mentality and also a next play mentality, where you have to have a quick mind in this league, where you can't be yeah. worrying about or, or soaking on the, those missed shots. Well, it's it, Juwan, it's so hard to get open in this league that if you get open again, you're really hurting your team if you don't shoot it again, if you're a shooter. And yeah. I see that. You got Wisconsin. You got Wisconsin coming up. And this is a team. Talk about – I'm looking in the mirror watching the two teams. They don't, they don't have bad fouls. Like, we never – we didn't foul a lot, but it wasn't about foul. We didn't have bad fouls a lot. We usually were one of the leaders there. They don't turn it over. You don't turn it over. You don't, you, you don't put people to the foul line. They don't put people to the foul line. You know, you got a bunch of shooters. And most of all, you have, counting your non-scholarship guys, you got nine, nine seniors. They have about five seniors. This is like old, this is like two great basketball programs that got things right. So it's going to be a great game. Just your thoughts quickly on Wisconsin. Well, uh, Greg has done a phenomenal job with that program. And, you know, this year, you, you said it best. Uh, they have an older team. And their core guys are guys that are, you know, some may joke and say, hey, you know, that team's older than uh, the Chicago Bulls <laughs> starting lineup. And I've heard that be mentioned. But yeah. that team is guys that have been together for some time, have bought into the culture, uh, have allowed themselves to be coached, has grew with their mistakes and, and seeing how they have improved. And then on top of this, um, they're competitors. And so, yes, uh, we're, we're mirrored in some ways, but uh, our thing is what we have to do about Wisconsin that, you know, it's been very, you know, elite level for them is they defend and they shoot the ball very well. And they, yeah. they will make you make a mistake if you get bored with guarding them. And this is where we have to <laughs> fundamentally sound and discipline yeah. in a way where like every – possession that they have on offense, we can't relax. Uh, once no, we relax, I, I, make you it's been, I mean, they're, they're amazing how they will just they'll control the game and you just, you can do it, but I, it's just a little bit, uh, you guys do a lot of that same things that you do not beat yourself and you can see that. And I think it has a lot to do right now with that. They're, they're older. You got some really old, uh, veteran players. I mean, it's, like you said, you're, I'm, I'm glad to see their Loudon parents in because you're going to have the biggest senior night in the history of any senior night ever. <laughs> and I hope every one of those parents can, can make that trip right there. But yes. just, just talk about, just talk to me a second about the guys that aren't playing, right? The CJ uh, Bears and, and the Jaron yeah, Falls yeah. and the Rico Asunos and uh, guys yeah. like that, that Luke, Luke Wilson, uh, do they have, well, could you give them any offense they want and they could run it for you in 15 minutes? Well, I tell you what, team? if whenever the day come, I'm going to be in tears losing those guys because they are so unique. And you know this because, 
you know, they were part of your team, your culture. Um, last two years, I've been so fortunate in having a group like Rico, Luke, CJ, Jaron Foles. <laughs> uh, but every time they on scout team, they're smart enough to pick up the other team sets, run it just like the other group. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be identical like the, yeah. this, your opponent, but they are buy into doing everything that, that they do with their habits. But what's so unique about them is that they're so givers. They, they, they have ultimate givers. They yeah. give to the team. Yeah. And our team success wouldn't be, would be happening if we didn't have the loops of the world, the CJ, yeah. the Ricos, and, and Jaron Foles. They always like all hands on deck. Whatever you got, coach. Whatever you need, coach. I got you, yeah. coach. You know, no, I, I it, love you. I'm like, no, I love you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I always said that was some of the best recruiting we ever did was to get the, and we go back to Josh Barlstein and Andrew Dockage and Sean Lonergan. These guys, I'm just telling you, they would beat us all the time in practice. And they could, you, they could run a Princeton offense in 10 minutes. I, I, it, it's so hard to do. How about, you know, what Sean D has done, what Michael Smith has done with Isaiah Austin and uh, Eli Brooks? I mean, did they all fit together like right away and just say, hey, listen, we're all, we're, we got five seniors here. We're just going to win. We're going to do it because they're really impressive. The, the two additions uh, from programs where they came, and let's say they have probably haven't been to the NCAA tournament, and now here they are on a program poised to, to go there. Well, you know, it goes back to this, this past spring and summer when we had our Zoom calls, and we, we had Zoom calls every week, every Friday. And uh, when, when they first committed, meaning Mike and Sean D., uh, we were having Zoom calls with the, you know, the court guys, the returning guys. And so I never forget Franz at Axe right before we started our Zoom. He said, Coach, when the other guys, the new guys are going to join us. And when they're going to join the Zoom call. And I'm like, wow, you know, like here you are, your new brothers are asking yeah. for the, the new teammates so they get to meet them and get to know them. So we hit the ground running, you know, right away when they joined the team, we were on Zooms. We had you know, yep. good team meetings and, and conversations and uh, getting to know each other, uh, know our families, uh, know the background, uh, know, know the mindset of each individual. So when we touch campus, when we were allowed to return, the brotherhood had already started back then. So when yeah. we started practicing and working out, um, the relationship was there. And, and Mike and Shandy, yes. Both haven't, you know, had an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. They both are thirsty and looking forward to that opportunity. To yeah. Competing on that level. They're hungry, but man. They, they are high character kids. They are competitors. Uh, they fit the Michigan culture. And we and I took my time yeah. and, you know, going after the right guys that I know that can fit and have the right mindset that's, that buys into team instead of I, 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 me, me, yeah. me. Well, I know how. I know how Franz got him over there. Franz started playing some German rap music for him because that's how <laughs> Mo, Mo got me listening to German rap music. And uh, that's what Fra Franz probably did. That's all he needs to do and everything will change. Those guys will all fall in together. So, but, but how, how Eli and Isaiah in Austin right now, I mean, obviously those, those young men are special to me, but I, I'm just so, uh, just so impressed with what they're doing. They, they stuck through coaching changes. They stuck through, they were starting, then they weren't starting. This is Bo Schembechler. Those who stay will be champions. And, and it's just a credit to you, your staff, but in, their, their family, their parents, such a big credit to them. Well, they put the team first. You know, and getting back to his Bo Schembechler words, team, team, team. And that's how their mindset, and that's how they're, you know, that's a part of DNA and they, they've been raised right. That my grandmother always say, you know, that's how they were raised. That's how they had learned back yep. in their households. And so like when I talked to Kelly Brooks and I talked to, you know, you know, the Davis family, um, you know, Isaiah, you know, his dad and his mom, you know, uh, to yep. talk about accountability, they always about on him about his academics. Um, it starts at home. And I'm very fortunate that I have, a group of guys that, you know, I don't have to over coach, nor do I have to um, get them to buy in. Uh, they they all 
what Michigan men should be like. And, you know, you did a phenomenal job in recruiting those guys uh, because they, they fit, you know, what Michigan, you know, is all about, you know, uh, they're great students. They hit it hard in the classroom. Uh, they're responsible on campus. Uh, um, and then on top of that, they come to practice they, here on time. They work they hard. Could, they, they, they could be coaches someday because they coach some of our yeah, young yeah. guys. Um, and, and they're smart basketball players. And so I trust them. And, but this is their team. And then get, getting to Franz, like, you know, Franz, his parents, you know, being living in Germany, you know, Franz is a throwback. He's a lot older than, you know, he's – his age is because he has yeah, so much years, maturity. Yeah. And, and Franz is uh, one of our best leaders, you know, in practice. Uh, and that's a key too. Like in practice, they all come to practice the work each and every day. Uh, let's start with that. But forget he, the game. He, you know, he, he and Hunter were both in my class. They were both in my leadership class this year. Right. And uh, they were, they just really, and, and of course you were nice enough to go on in it too, but it, it's like, they, it was almost like they could lead the class themselves. They're b- sort of born in that way, and mm-hmm. it certainly makes it easier on all of us. But they all all need it all through the year. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, you, you have a talented, really have a talented staff, and I mean it, it's incredible how how well everybody is sort of meshed together. But I'm wondering if we used to have. Do you still have the All Star games we used to have in the All Star games when when you play a game and the guys that don't play play the next day? I don't know if you do that right now, but that was a big part of what we did. And, and I'm proposing an all-star game because I want to see a game where it's either against your starters or against your second guys, where Phil Martelli, Howard, yeah, Howard right, Sadi, you, Chris Hunter, Jerron Simmons, and John Sanderson, maybe half court, Juwan, play some of those guys in, <laughs> in like a five-minute in, in five game. You got right. talent in that coaching staff that I right. bet can still play. Martelli led Widener in assists. You know, he was a hell of a point guard. Right, right, could, right. And, and back then, I mean, he could still play. And, uh-huh. and Judy is, is what his wife might even be better. But I heard that. <laughs> any chance of if you played that game, I'd love to see that game because if it was a short game and it was half court, right, right. you guys could play with anybody. Well, coach, the key words you said was half court. We got to keep it half court because <laughs> if you try to go full court, I mean, then you're going to need an oxygen tank. Uh, you may need a doctor out there because somebody may pull something or hurt yeah. something. Um, but, you know, that, that will be fun. That's a great idea. You know, Coach Martelli, uh, you know, getting back to the staff itself, um, they are as pure as it come. Um, they, they're egoless, um, you know, hard workers. They grind, man, and they are all in. Uh, when it comes to like, you know, decisions at the end, you know, it's not like I, I, is my decision or I, you know, Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I suggested the wrong thing. Um, yeah. We're going to hold each other accountable. Uh, we're also going to push yeah. one another. Um, but at the same time, at the end of the day, we're going to support each other. And I'm just so you know happy to you know have a staff that I know I can trust that's going to work hard. And then I know that they have the kids best interest at heart. You know, and that's the thing right there. Our players yeah. come first for each and every staff yeah. member. And we're doing that wherever we can to help our guys become the best version of themselves. And we're not asking yeah. for any type of pat on the back or it's my, you know, um, yeah. you know, give me the attention or whatever. It's about the players and how we can serve them. Yeah, I mean, they really, that's what they really want to know, Juwan. They want to know, do you care about them off the court? Can you make them better? You know, mm-hmm. are, are, do, you, do you really know your stuff? And it's check, check, check with everybody on your staff. I, I'm going to leave with this because I think one of the best things the NCAA did was allow Chris Hunter and Jerron Simmons to get on that court and learn how to coach, be with you. I see it in Hunter. I, I mean, first of all, Hunter had a great high school coach, and, and Mike yep. Jones. Now no, he comes it. in. He's got you, a bit, you know, a bit, big men coaches aren't like you don't go around every corner and see big men coaches. And they, we got you, and all of a sudden, and, and you got Chris Hunter, and Sadi does a great job with that. And, how, and then you take your guard coaches. I mean, but just having those two young bodies out there a little bit with them, what a smart move by the NCAA. Wouldn't you agree? I, I do agree, and I hope the NCAA uh, allows it to stay the way how, it is, how they have allowed us to have those guys on the floor because – you know, I look at it like this. I want to help Chris become a, a coach someday. 
Uh, I want to help Jerron become a, a coach someday and whatever, not saying I got all the answers, but whatever I can do to help them put them in the be best position to, to be yeah. what they want to be. But these reps now this season, like Jerron and Chris has been heavily active, had a big role yep. with our practice preparation, with our uh, player development. Uh, you know, it's not just my voice, you know, Hunter will tell you, you know, I, Chris, He's, he has a voice. Not only that, you know, I allow him to sometimes to run the drills because he may yep. have some fresh ideas that will, will help uh, a hunter. And I think it's very unique that Hunter has two guys like myself who played on yep. the highest level, uh, who've also played yep. you know, collegially and, and also on the NBA level. So he's very fortunate. But then you have Jerron, who works with Coach Howard Isley uh, with the guards. And then, you know, Saudi works with the wings. Like another guy that played before, uh, another guy who was, you know, very uh, versatile in his his way of coaching, fresh ideas. You know, it's just yeah, uh, couldn't ask for anything no, more. Saw, it's a God's gift, and uh, you know, I thank God every day. You know, for a for this opportunity, and b just to be surrounded around people that I enjoy coming to work and, well, and working be, with. Be careful; they're so good, you won't have them long. The other, the other, no, the other no. coaches will. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the other uh, that the, the, they'll have head jobs coming because they're all don't you think they all have that ability? They really yes. should do that. And so just like I would just like yeah, I would never hold them back. Yeah, they're they're young Juwan Howards right now. They they their playing <laughs> days are done and they're ready. They love the game. They want to teach the game. They do a great job with that. So uh, we, hey, we we've taken a lot of your time. We wish you very, very well. You got. You know, the schedule is, continues to be difficult for everybody. I can't imagine what it's like. I think it's, it's still hard to travel, even if you're playing in empty arenas and play, because it's just, it's just hard for everybody. When somebody was telling me, you know, the other day, when you, go to the, when you, when you check out, every, only two guys in an elevator at a time going down yeah. in an elevator or something like that, takes forever just to load the bus. It's, <laughs> it's a you difficult thing, and you guys are a, a master at it. <laughs> Better manage. So good luck to you. And uh, uh, you know how I feel, but I got to be a little neutral now, but you know how I'm feeling, man. I'm rooting for you guys every chance I can. Thank you, coach. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for everything. All right. Thank you for your support, too, right. coach. Thank, thanks, Juwan.